Yes, keep going for our five comedian four already. Yeah, keep going for that, man. So funny, yeah. Um, Charles started with talking about stereotype. You know, some of the stereotype actually makes sense to me because ever since I got here, I hear a Asian stereotype says Asian people look like. Do you all heard that? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because when I was in okay Asian countries, right? Uh, I heard the stereotype they're saying all white people look like. <laughs> yeah. And when I got here, I first got here at University of Idaho, Mos Moscow, Idaho, where the quadruple murder happened. <laughs> That's where I went, right? So uh, I went to cafeteria when I first landed. And I was student there. I'm like, I look around, it's like, wow, Asian people, they're wrong. Because white people, you don't look like. You don't. You just think alike. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Fair game, right? Uh, yeah, so uh, my name is Yin. I'm looking for Yan. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm here, I really, yeah. I, I came all the way from Spokane. You know, I've been single mother for eight years, like I'm running out of my luck. So Seattle is a bigger market. So. <laughs> Gotta have my yeah here, right? Yeah, Tacoma, wow, another new market. Uh, by that I mean I'm not even picky, okay? I'm just trying to get laid. <laughs> so, um, yeah, 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 okay. Uh, I, Spokane, yeah, the word, word, I should have better luck here. Yeah. Um, so I lived in Spokane 28 years. 28 years, I just recently moved here, okay? Uh, I did it just to prove I am not a tourist. Yeah, I am here to stay, guys. <laughs> yeah, here to stay, so don't tell me, go back to your country, no, fuck that shit, right. Uh, but originally, I'm from China, though, China, Woo, uh oh. Now I'm curious, now I'm curious. Anybody here, raise a hand if you're a fan of China. Let me see. We got one, two, three, wow, four. Thank you, thank you, China. Yeah, I love you guys. But for the rest of the room, if you're not a fan of China, I don't blame you, okay? But you know what? Don't worry about me because all my jokes are made in America. So, yeah. I'm good, good, very safe, you know. Uh, but sometimes uh, Chinese people, we do feel like we want to apologize. So I want to apologize <laughs> if I speak very heavy Alabama accent, y'all. Nice to hide Yeah, so, so far, I, I'm curious, so I'm kind of anxious. Uh, so far, what do you think, my English? Yes, we okay? Yeah, all right. Well, thank you, Tacoma. She town Pisa. You guys are so nice. Yeah, yeah beautiful sure. people. <laughs> but you know what, I'll tell you. Uh, 30 years ago, when I first got here, though, oh, my English was awful. Oh, my God. I still remember that day, first day, when I landed in Sita. You know, yeah, that's where I came, right? Then, then drive to uh, Moscow, I know. So uh, I remember when you pass through the immigration, I gave them the form, immigration form, because I filled out on the plane. Right? So the immigration officer was not happy with me when she saw my form. She was looking at me, looking at the form, like, I'm like, look at what you got in there. Right? I look at the form after they ask your name, your birthday, they ask for sex. So what I had in the form is uh, once a month. Once a month. Because <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, you know what, I'm new here, I don't know nobody. Once a month sounds pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I always just feel like uh, lucky they didn't ask me how. Then I have to say by hand. Well, that's not going to be good. <laughs> right. Uh, but you know what? You cannot blame my English because your English is very confusing. A lot of times, so confusing. i give you another example, okay? This word you got going, blowjob. <laughs> blowjob, yeah. You know, it turned out blowjob don't mean blow. It means a sucker Wow. <laughs> this is, this is, I know, this is, yeah, it's so screwed up, you know? Because my, my ex-husband, my ex-husband is a white Caucasian guy. You know, I still remember first time he asked me a blowjob. I went to the bathroom and came out with a blow dryer. <laughs> you know, blowjob, here it is, right? I guess that's why I ended up divorced, you know? Yeah. Yeah, uh, so I'm still learning, still learning a lot of English words and new culture and everything. Uh, recently, I learned a new word, okay? Asexual. 
because uh, I moved to Seattle and doing a lot of my some some of the comics and they're asexual. I'm like, wow, you know, uh, asexual. This word I never heard before, but I just assume I know what that meant. Because asexual, you know that A is always great, right? Better than B, always the greatest, right? So I'm, I'm assuming asexual just means those alpha males and the females. They're horny as hell. They're very powerful sexual, sexual, you know, sexually. You know, they fuck a lot, a lot, right? <laughs> you know, and turn out no, turn out uh, asexual means no sex. Whoa. Did you, do you know that? That means, it means someone do not want sex. Zero. I'm like, really? The asexual mean that? Uh, I don't, it don't make sense to me, you know. It's, yeah, it's opposite of good, right? I mean, I'll, they just don't want it. I'm like, okay, if that is the case, I can borrow this word, asexual, okay? Um, so let me back up a little bit, okay? Uh, we're talking about we're 50 plus people. So me, yeah. So ever since I started menopause, ooh, this room, <laughs> all right, okay, this room is quiet though, right? So ever since, yeah, I was going through uh, menopause, people just assume Ying is not a fuckable anymore. You know? And that is not true at all. I think for the ladies, if you're going through uh, menopause, it, it just means that your your eggs is not you know producing firm or whatever that means your testosterone running like crazy right yeah to me uh, menopause just means a lot of days just a free uh free birth control you know right you know i have to do yeah yeah free birth control i need to tell my partner yeah it just means come inside of me yeah, wow yeah. yeah that is yeah whoever tell you yeah come inside me that's that's uh, that, you know, I, I know, I, but some other days though, some other days when you're going through menopause, it's kind of like, I don't feel like, you know what, uh, leave me alone, right? In the past I say that, but now, with this word asexual, I just mean, you know what, my sexuality going through phases. Right now, I'm, I'm asexual phases, <laughs> leave me alone, wow. I like this word, yeah, that's what I'm using now. Asexual, wow. This word is very powerful, very positive, and all of a sudden, I belong to a community. Yeah, I think they're LGBTQ, they should plus asexual. Yeah, I'm, now I'm a community, right? Man, um, all right. So, yeah, because uh, Trevor, uh, the booker, told me, you guys like dirty jokes, so I just have to go with dirty joke tonight, right? Yeah. Right. So being here, being in the US for 30 years, I have experienced a culture shock. One of the culture shock that I experienced, like, ass culture, okay? Ass culture, you got going here, ass is a big deal, right? You know, I don't know, I'm not talking about, you know, uh, Turkey tur tur ass, no. It's like, <laughs> okay, I'll get to that. Uh, but but uh, when I was in New York City doing this joke, ass culture joke, there was a guy sitting in the front. He was like, yeah, 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 I like ass. I, I love, I eat ass. <laughs> I was like, okay, first of all, that was not where I was going, you know, but because this guy brought it up, so I'm gonna have to address it head up, okay? So ask, you didn't ask, but you know, uh, so people my, my age, I'm talking about 50 plus, yeah, not a long ago, when we say to somebody, kiss my ass, that is bad thing to say, right? Yeah. That is bad thing to say somebody and and design to humiliate somebody. Yeah. But you know what the Gen Z's generation now? Yeah. Kiss my ass is a good thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and actually kiss my ass is love, right? Yeah, yeah you really, that person really have to love you to eat your ass, right? <laughs> I mean, you really have to love somebody else to eat their ass, right? So I'm like, okay, what happened? What happened? Kiss my eyes is bad, yeah. but eat my eyes is love. <laughs> what is going on, America? You know, I don't know how to tell you people. I'm like, something missing, okay? Something missing in the middle, okay? They're missing link here, all right? So I'm thinking, you know, the missing link in the middle. How about finger my eyes? <laughs> That'd be good, right? Yeah. No, no, no. Um, 
So you how to really confuse the shit out of me, yeah. So let, now, now let me go back to the ass culture I was really trying to address, okay? So I'm talking about the women here in America, they all want to have a big, sexy, curvy ass, right? And, but you know, I, 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 think I have no problem with that if you're a black woman and Latino ladies have naturally have that one. But white woman, what is the wrong with you? You know, I'm, give me an example. Kim Kardashian, okay, number one, Kim Kardashian. She's white and, and Nicki Minaj, and she, she's, she's black, but she thinks she's white. And Cardi B, Cardi B, these three ladies, okay? They're all beautiful and they're rich. And guess what? All these three ladies went out there and spent $100,000, right? To get this fake, plastic, huge ass. Yep. Right? Yeah. I think three of them, only Cardi B admit it. She said, yeah, she, she did it. The other two are denying. Oh, my God. But uh, what I'm saying is, like, I look at it. I don't get it. As a Chinese woman, I don't get it. I'm not asking guys here, okay? So why? Uh, do you think that huge... Uh, a huge ass, uh, sexy, the plastic ones. Do you think that's sexy? What is going on with there? Right? I mean, to me, like, I don't think it's sexy. First of all, how, what, how can you even find the asshole? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you really have to dig it, right? Talking about eating ass, right? you really have to dig it. Man, um, yeah, but, but, <laughs> the reason I'm saying is like, as, as a Chinese a woman, as Asian woman, we all have very flat ass, right? And that's why I can tonight, I'm not going to turn around, okay? Nobody can see, see my flat ass. I'm very protective on my flat ass. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the reason I keep saying this an ass culture is because it really impacted my life, okay? When I first married to this white guy on my wedding day, wedding night, and this guy, my ex-husband said, well, you do realize you have a flat ass. Wow. Yeah, that was the first thing that let me realize, I'm like, flat ass. And then during our marriage, the, every time we have an argument, it's always go back. It doesn't matter what problem was initially was, you either, the dish is piled up or he hasn't mowed the lawn for seven weeks and tell me, hey, hey look at the grass. This is got to him. Go, go mow the grass. And he would say, Look at your flat ass. <laughs> so, so my flat ass fall. <laughs> anyway, so we ended up divorced. And, uh, you know, but after we divorced, I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe I should improve myself, right? But I don't have a hundred thousand dollars. As I asked my friend, my friend says, okay, go to gym. Go to gym. I went to gym, uh, talked to a personal trainer. Personal trainer, okay, you want to improve your ass. You want a sexy big, so. and he said, all you gotta do is just do squat. Like, you gotta do squat. <laughs> so I, I do squat, I did that like two or three times per week. You know, I go to gym and, and each, and then home, and each time I did half hour or something. For, yeah, I'm like, I did that for a year, I squat, I did a squat. But guess what, now I lost all my fat. So my ass is shrunk. Now I got burn of steel. Yeah. Still single. Yeah. Nobody. That's, that's right. I feel like I have to, have to make some public announcement bullshit. You know what I mean? Yeah, wow. My ass. And, uh, no, it's very, I still feel pressure. Um, so anyway, um, how's my time doing? Should I keep going? Um, keep going. Let's keep go. going. All right, all right. So uh, I, uh, when I was in Spokane, I started doing open mic, doing comedy over there, right? Uh, one time there's a host, open mic host, he said, uh, uh, raise a hand, call me if you want to be roasted. So I rose my hand, raised my hand, so when it was my turn, and he said, Ying, you don't belong here. <laughs> wow. I mean, but you know what? That was the honest roast I ever heard. You know, but that got me thinking, I don't belong here. Why? Why was I even ended up here in the U.S.? Yeah, I'll tell you why. America, you sold it to me. You sold it to me. First thing Americans sold to me is a Coca-Cola. When I was in college, first time I tasted it, the Coca-Cola is like, this is like some black thing here and they're a little bitter and a little sweet and they just cannot stop drinking it. Wow, this thing is just so addictive. That's my first drug, okay? 
Virgin. Yeah, to a virgin, virgin Chinese woman mouse man. So they have, uh, so when I got my first job, you know, I, I got my first month salary is equivalent of 18 US dollars. I bought a whole case of Coca-Cola. <laughs> yeah. Second thing is sold to me, KFC chicken. Yeah. I still remember Beijing, China, when the first KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurant opened, you know, I was waiting in line for an hour and a half just to get in, you know. Yeah, I got in, I bought this whole chicken leg, right? And like, wow, this is amazing because in China, the chickens, they only chop it up. There's small pieces in all the chicken dishes. You don't know what's in there. Yeah, you know, the cat, dog, and maybe, maybe rats, and maybe even bats. You don't know. But American whole chicken, this is amazing, yeah. So I just love a KFC. I mean, now, now of course, um, a McDonald's. So. But anyway, a third thing, third thing American you guys sold to me is a melting pot. This idea, I was taking American history class, right? So like, okay, okay, I got it on slavery, civil war, the fast forward. Okay, melting pot, tell me more about that. And I asked the teacher, right? So the teacher was saying, in New York City, there's 156 nationalities. You know, I'm like, wow, I don't know, ethnicity, 100 something, but this melting pot is amazing. New York City is like, I'm packing after the class, something. Um, Anyway, you saw it to me. I loved it. I got here, but first first stop, of course, University of Idaho, okay? Mouse, because that's the widest place. <laughs> and that's a weak link. <laughs> Easier to get in, the school, yeah. But anyway, so I, uh, I, I got there, but then I find out, you know what? This melting pot thing is not easy to do. It took me a long time to melt it <laughs> to your pot, okay? The first thing I find out was not easy, is every time I drink cold milk, I got diarrhea. You know, because in China, nobody drink cold milk. We have to heat it up to the boiling point, okay? So I don't know what the good germs you got, I like got bad germ or something, but this is just, you know, so I had to take a pill to stop the leak, all right? Yeah, and then another thing is, every time I eat pizza, I got constipation. I think it's a cheese, you know, some other cheese I just, so I got, take another pill to take that one, all right, take care of that. It took me about a year, over a year, to get over two symptoms, right? But later on, I thought about this thing like, you know, when I had constipation, should I, shouldn't I just drink the cold milk? <laughs> that should take care of the problem, right? But guess what, master degree was not making me smarter. <laughs> I had to take pill, right? So I'm like, all right, all right, a year later, finally I melt it to your pot, everything's good. But then Trump became president. All of a sudden, right? All of a sudden, go back to your country, right? The Mexicans are bad, Chinese are sleep, uh, stealing jobs or whatever. So I'm thinking, what is going on in America? You guys uh, don't like this pot anymore? You want to out, out melt this pot? <laughs> yeah, you want to separate the soybeans from the chilies, from the curries. You know what I'm saying? What is going on? It, it really bothered me, and it made me think a lot. I did try to listen to all the white people complain and their grievances about immigrants. I, I, I listened a lot, right? I became quiet. And then I saw, you know, I saw about this thing. And so I'm like, you know what? My people, I don't know how many white people in this room here, but my, what I'm saying is instead of complaining, you know, why don't you focus on what you're good at, it, white people? So do you know what you're good at it? Raise your hand. I'm the fastest you raise your hand here. You don't know. Wow, nobody. So if you don't know, I'll tell you white people what you're good at, okay? You're good at discover continent. Oh, shit. Right. Yeah, you, you, you discovered the North Pole, the South Pole, and the America, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you landed on the moon, right? White people did that? Oh, yeah. So with uh, Elon Musk, uh, you should just go to Mars. Yeah. That's where you belong. But white people, are you bothered now? You're quiet? Yeah. yeah, it's because they tell me I cannot punch it down, so I have to punch up, which is the white people, right? So it's a joke, it's a joke. But anyway, so what I'm saying is the next time when you discover new piece of land, make sure don't call it Indian. And yeah, because that's been taken twice, right? Yeah, and also make sure before you go, um, uh, vaccine yourself. 
you know, oh. because your germ, your germ worked, right? Your germ killed 46 million native, <laughs> native Indians. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I said to Joe one time, and my daughter correct me, my daughter's in her 20s, right? So she said, mom, don't say native Indian, say indigenous people. So if you don't believe me, Google it, Google it. White people, your germ killed 46 million indigenous people. I'm talking about all the way from Canada, all the way to South America, the whole continent. Yeah, that's how many people you killed by your germs, okay? Uh, the Nazis only killed 6 million Jews, but you guys did 46, so. Anyway, oh wow, that was not required. You wanna, you wanna dip you again? So can, can the moon light it up something? So okay, I'll end with that, okay? I will end with a quiz and see if you everybody take, pay attention still, okay? So here's a quiz. Uh, what's the difference between we and the wow? Anybody? Uh, say that again. What's the difference between we and the wow? Nobody, okay. Okay, the answer is six inches. <laughs> We're gonna have to end with this joke, right? Cause, cause that's the first time my reaction when I saw an erect penis, you know? Yeah, I was like, a minute ago it's a wee wee, right? You know, like like when I saw when I changed baby diapers, that was a wee wee. How come now it's a six inches? I like, I said, are you okay? <laughs> Should I see doctor? Do you want me to take you to ER? All right, all right. That's that's your six inches. Okay, maybe see you, Miss Lam. Okay, uh, let's bring back our uh, our host. Yeah.